the Kentucky Wildcats. Now, Mark Stoops has overachieved with this program to a high, high level, and I love what he's doing. I love the way that he's building the roster, etc., but the way that he builds this roster uh, doesn't make me think that this is going to be a great season. And I will explain that as we go through. Uh, last year, PPA margin number 31. The offense was number 39 in PPA per drive. Defense, number 31 in PPA per drive. That's uh, predicted points added per drive. It's uh, an, an advanced metric. We'll say that. Kind of includes uh, explosiveness and success rate, etc. Right? Efficiency. You look at the turnover margin, number 125. Uh, that's not good. You look at the explosiveness on offense, the defense allowing number 111 passing success rate. Uh, there were there were some questions. And then, of course, you lose uh, a bunch of guys on the offensive line, et cetera. We'll start off with the offense here. You're losing Liam Cohen, the offensive coordinator. He is the new Rams OC. And you're bringing in Rich Scangranello. Or Scang... Pfft, I have messed this up a thousand... I tried to say it a billion times. Rich Scangarello. There we go. Uh, 49ers quarterback coach, same tree, basically. Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, all that. I think he's going to run a very similar offense. It should work really well for um, uh, for Will Levis. The quarterback, of course, is the story here. There's a ton of hype around him, but, you know, last year, numbers not exactly great. They were... Uh, there's a lot of NFL hype. Only four games that he threw for over 200 yards. That was against three G5 schools in Tennessee last year. Uh, can anybody replace Wandale Robinson? I mean, the production from him last year was absurd. I think he had like a 40% usage rate. Uh, Tavion Robinson, maybe, from Virginia Tech. They got similar builds. Like, maybe that's somebody that could come in and replace him if they try and do the same thing. Um but who the offensive line coach is gone. Only two offensive linemen return with over 135 snaps. I do trust Stoops to be able to build a pretty effective offensive line, but who? I mean, that is that's a lot gone from that line. Uh, running back should not be an issue. I wouldn't imagine, even if Chris Rodriguez is out for uh, a couple of games at the start of the season, whatever that situation may end up being. I, I do think they're going to be able to run the ball. They got guys there, so we'll see. We'll see. On the defense, Brad White still the defensive coordinator. Scheme is probably going to stay the same with a lot of young guys that know it, right? It's all guys that have come up and been developed in that scheme. Defensive line returns four with 200-plus snaps. Nobody over 241, though. So, again, a couple of guys that are wet behind the ears. The linebacking core uh, it looks loaded. I mean, you got five players with 200-plus snaps. You got three of them with 486-plus. Uh, definitely, definitely good. Uh, the question here, of course, with that defensive line, et cetera, do we think that they can stay at number 24 in rushing PPA allowed on defense? Because uh, they were great against the run. Uh, secondary brings in two transfers that could play right away, along with three players with 300-plus snaps last year, but they were number 72 in passing PPA allowed. Uh, that wasn't great. This this was not the strongest unit on that side of the ball. I will certainly say that. Uh, you, and you saw it in the Tennessee game. They gave up 45 points there. So I I look at this uh, projected favorites in eight games. They've got seven toss ups. Toss ups to me are games that are decided within one score, uh, are projected to be decided by one score, and that's all the way up to eight points. Uh, you got seven of them on a twelve game schedule. I mean that's a lot of toss ups, a lot of coin flips here. Uh, win total sits at seven and a half. It's juiced to the over at minus one ninety. Uh, you know, like maybe I don't know. We we look at this a little bit. Uh, the keys to the season. Will Scangarello's offense uh, change much from Cohen's? I don't think so, but we'll see. Uh, who replaces Wandale's production? Now, I brought up uh, Tavion Robinson from Virginia Tech. Maybe. Maybe that's who brings it. I, I, you know, it's tough. Wandale was so good in that offense. Uh, will they continue to produce at a high level on the offensive line with a new OL coach and three new starters? That's going to be a question. Now, Stoops has always developed there. He's always done good, but a lot of questions. A lot of questions right there. And, of course, the key to the season, is Will Levis worth all the hype? With the rushing success that they had behind last year's offensive line, they were number six in success rate, by the way. Um, they only had to pass 42% of the time. So it's it's not like they really needed a whole lot done. So and I've got something talking to me over here in the background. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. But uh, but let's see. Let's uh, I, my, my projection here is 7-5. and five. I will say that. (laughs) 
seven and five for Kentucky this year. Um, I just whenever they have a really really big year, this is the kind of program that needs to develop more players as you lose some of the big ones, right? Josh Ali also was a, a huge contributor. Uh, you got Pascal, et cetera, uh, on the defensive side. Like, with the offensive line hindered a bit with losing such production at wide receiver, um, I think the offense is maybe going to take some hits, and I think the defense is going to take some hits. So if you're doing that, uh, it doesn't necessarily set up well, even though the schedule you know, maybe allows you to get to eight wins. So I could see eight wins. Uh, what I've got here right now is a loss to Florida. I've got a loss to South Carolina, loss to Mississippi State, loss to Tennessee and Georgia. Uh, I could see them beating any of those. But, you know, I've got wins over Ole Miss on the road. Uh, I've got a win uh, at Missouri, you know, a win over Louisville. Any of those are losable, right? So I think I think 7-5 and five is reasonable. Um, I don't know if I'm going to bet it. Plus 155 for the under- might have to look at that. Might have to look at that. Um, to win the division, they're 10-1. to 1. So, there's a lot of hype. But regardless, uh, I do like Kentucky. Uh, I do think that what Stoops is building there is awesome. Uh, again, 7-5, and five, get Stoops another year extension. So, that's definitely good. But uh, but I think there's just a little bit that they lost. Uh, they lost too much coming into the season. So, I'll I, at least to me. But you guys can correct me in the comments if you'd like to. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe. And we'll see you soon.